Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Arturo and I am an artist and a technologist. Photogrammetry has been an invaluable resource in my recent explorations of digital self-expression, especially within the realms of 3D and computer graphics, and I'm really, really excited to finally start sharing some of that with you. But before we do that, I'd like to get two quick things out of the way. One, I'll leave links to everything that I mentioned in the description of this video, as well as chapter markers. So if you want to go back and reference it or skip around, you're, you'll feel free to do that. And two, this video is fully sponsored by me. And so that means that everything that I talk about here is my own opinion or purchased with my own money, and it's in no way influenced by a third party or a sponsor. So with that being said, if you want to support the channel, you can also find information about that in the description of this video. All right, so with all that out of the way, roll the intro. If you know me or you happen to follow me on social media, you'll know that I'm as excited about new media and advancing technologies as I am about self-expression. So imagine my delight when I found a way to meld them all. In January of 2020, I set out to dedicate that entire year to learning how to use Blender. Blender is a free and open source 3D creation suite it supports the entirety of the 3D pipeline, and that includes modeling, rigging, animation, simulation, rendering, compositing, motion tracking, video editing, and even a 2D animation pipeline. We'll dive deeper into the power of Blender in other videos and streams on this channel, but for today, I'd like to focus on my favorite photogrammetry workflows using Blender and Polycam. Now, you might be wondering, what is photogrammetry? Photogrammetry is the science and technology of obtaining reliable information about physical objects and the environment through the process of recording, measuring, and interpreting photographic images. In the context of Blender and other 3D creation suites, photogrammetry is a means of capturing an object, a place, or even a person or thing and bringing it into the 3D space and the 3D world. I started my journey in photogrammetry pretty much like everyone else. What's wrong? I just wish I could scan this cat and bring it into Blender without having to model or sculpt it. Oh, that's easy. Just photo scan it. What? Yeah, there's a bunch of apps out there that do it for you. You just walk around an object and scan it and bring it into Blender or whatever tool you're using. Then I stumbled onto Displayland. It was like seeing the world with new eyes. Every trip outside became a scanning adventure. At the time, Displayland was my go-to app for scanning objects with my phone. I could simply walk around an object taking photos and have a reasonable model of it shortly after. It wasn't perfect, but it definitely gave some impressive results and had a healthy community behind it. I'd get back home with a bunch of scans on my phone and scroll through other people's scans, and it was a nice way of connecting with the outside world in a time when we were all locked in. But unfortunately, Displayland uh, shut their operations down shortly after that. And so I continued my testing and my researching, but this time finding a hardware solution to the problem by way of LiDAR. Now, what is LiDAR? LiDAR is an acronym for Light and Detection Ranging, which is a means of remote sensing that uses a pulsing laser that shoots out to an object and returns information about the distance between the laser and the object. We can then take the information and recreate a 3D model of that object. I started experimenting with Intel's RealSense camera, which is used in computer vision applications to allow computers and robots to see and understand depth information. As you can imagine, the results were incredibly clean and detailed. Despite its very real and very useful applications for computer vision, some of the drawbacks that I encountered using that camera were that it was cost prohibitive and the software was either clunky or expensive and I just couldn't find a tool that would allow me to rotate around an object and scan it using the camera. And around that time, the first iPad with a LiDAR sensor was announced and I was immediately over the moon about the possibilities and capabilities of equipping a tablet with a LiDAR scanner. I mean, who wouldn't want a tablet that you could walk around with, scan an object, and then the next moment you're sculpting that object and cleaning up the mesh and then sending it over to Blender or Unity or Maya or Unreal or whatever your flavor of 3D creation suite is. It's a dream. We are living in it. 
because Polychem has just released their photo mode, which allows you to simply take photos of an object and upload those in order to scan it, which means you can bypass the need for a LiDAR sensor on your phone, which means that if you have an older iPhone that doesn't have a LiDAR sensor, you can still take scans of things, and it's incredibly impressive. I took the scans that you see here on screen using Polycam's photo mode, and I'm viewing them on desktop. As you'll know, the detail even in the smaller scans is such that you don't really need to go in and clean them up all that much, which frees you up some time to get creative. When you scanned your face and you scanned your friends and you're looking to try something new, well, why not bring them into Blender and give them something to do? Did you really think I was going to keep that up the whole time? Of course not. Enable Blender's edit mode and start deleting faces you don't need. We'll dig deeper into cleaning up your scans in the next video, but know that the knife tool and sculpting are your friends. While this bit doesn't look all that fun, it can actually be pretty cathartic, so make sure you take your time. If you're looking to animate or rig a human, you can bring it into Mixamo. More on that later, too. I was going to model a chair, but then I remembered I could just get one from Sketchfab using their Blender plugin. A video on how I built this scene using only free assets from Sketchfab is on the way. I dragged and dropped the fancy cottage from Blender's built-in Blender Kit asset library and used Botanique, a foliage add-on, for the foliage. I composed this shot with a simple camera plopped down on the scene, animated the camera movements, added some sound design, voila. And there you have it. I've truly enjoyed my experience using Polycam. Not only has it been an excellent tool for approximating or fully capturing objects, but it served as a means of immortalizing them too. You can navigate my series of Polycam captures and more on Sketchfab, and even use them in your own projects if you like. Have you used photogrammetry or Polycam before? What did you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.